Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, GoGo expands 5G footprint into Canada. Avidyne updates us on Vantage, the Atlas FMS, and the Helix Integrated Flight Deck. Mid-Continent 3-Packs go digital. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to our special coverage of the 2023 AEA Convention and Trade Show. ANN livestreamed dozens of exciting new avionics announcements this morning, and we'll be covering those today and over the week, so you can be sure to get all the most important avionics news from AEA 2023. Now let's get into today's stories. GoGo -Go expands 5G footprint into Canada. GoGo -Go Business Aviation has confirmed that it will expand its GoGo -Go 5G network into Canada, providing additional coverage to business aviation operators in North America. Sergio Aguirre, GoGo's -Go president and chief operating officer, said, quote, Building on our nationwide network in the contiguous United States, expanding into Canada will allow our customers to realize enhanced in-flight connectivity and more destinations and routes where they fly, end quote. GoGo -Go 5G is expected to deliver 25 megabits per second on average, with peak speeds in the 75 to 80 megabits per second range. So this network, and again I mentioned the amount of aircraft that fly in North America, this is an opportunity for those customers, those decision makers that want to invest in more for their aircraft, this is going to be available to add to the Avance platform. Again, the Avance platform is foundational, and the Avance L5, which over 2,200 aircraft, will then have the opportunity to add 5G to that. And this is a separate network from our licensed network that I just mentioned, and this network is done. It's ready to go. I'm also announcing today at the show, when we put out press this morning on this on the Newswire, that we are now going to move to Canadian coverage for the 5G network, and we're going to start that build out this year and complete it next year. So that's one of our big announcements at the show is 5G Canadian network. And after these messages, Billy Nolan to step down from top FAA position. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Billy Nolan to step down from top FAA position. Acting FAA Administrator Billy Nolan announced in an intra-agency memo that he intends to leave his post within a period of time measurable in months. Nolan wrote, quote, I have given everything to this agency and now it's time to do the same for my family, who have sacrificed so much and supported me during my time at the FAA, end quote. Nolan's departure will exacerbate the paucity of stable leadership by which the FAA has been afflicted for over a year. Currently, a number of the agency's key offices are occupied by officials working in acting capacities. FAA releases policy memo on task-based phase one. The FAA has published guidelines for an optional task-based phase one flight testing program, thereby establishing an alternative to prior requirements. 
Upon an applicant aircraft's completion of the newly specified tasks, the FAA will approve creation of a unique aircraft operating handbook. The applicant aircraft thereafter is considered to have completed the Phase 1 flight testing period. The program prescribes a series of 17 discrete flight test tasks and recommends the test be flown per test cards carried in the aircraft. Near-term B-17 Wingspar AD possible EAA remains busy repairing and restoring the association's B-17 and are working closely with the FAA. The B-17, dubbed Aluminum Overcast, has been sidelined since damage to one of its wing fittings was observed during a routine pre-flight check in spring 2021. The finding compelled other B-17 operators, such few as remain, to ground their respective aircraft for purpose of performing wind spar inspections and addressing any problems therewith. If discovered in sufficient numbers, Flying Fortress wing spar anomalies could prompt the FAA to issue a B-17 AD in the near future. AEA Live Schedule for Tuesday and Wednesday The AEA convention and trade show enjoyed several hours of live streaming today as ANN webcast their new product introduction series from over 30 companies for the 15th year in a row. The schedule resumes tomorrow with three hours of fascinating interviews starting at 1300 Tuesday and resuming Wednesday at 1100 Eastern. See all the news at airborne-live.net. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Avidyne updates us on Vantage, the Atlas FMS, and the Helix integrated flight deck. It's going to be an interesting year for Avidyne, with certification expected this year for the Avidyne Vantage 12 for the first of a number of airframes, the Atlas FMS for Lear 55 series, and the Helix Integrated Flight Deck, which is set to go first into an S76C++ and more. Um, I'm going to give you a quick update today on what Avidyne's been up to. Uh, of course, we're uh, moving forward on our Vantage 12 program for Cirrus aircraft. Excuse me. Um, uh, so if you have Cirrus owners that uh, have the uh, Legacy Integra equipment. We've got the Vantage 12 upgrade that will be coming out later this year. We have announced 2023 pricing, and we've also announced our ADC2 and uh, uh, MAG2 uh, option. And of course, earlier we announced, uh, this would have been uh, in the last year, but uh, many of you may not be aware, we've uh, approved the dual Atlas installation in the Lear 55 series, and of course adding GPS and route, and approach operations, synthetic vision, electronic approach charts, lots of nice capabilities in, in, in that same form factor where it was NAV only. So uh, that's a great program and we're moving into additional Part 25 aircraft as we, as we speak. And then at Heli Expo, we announced the partnership with our friends at ISNS to develop the, the new Helix uh, integrated flight deck featuring our dual Helios FMS systems, giving these helicopter operators improved dispatchability, reliability, et cetera. And we're proud to say we've partnered with PHI as system integrator on the, uh, the initial STC, uh, which is being an uh, S76C++ and that'll be out later this year. So a lot going on there. And after these messages, Mid-Continent 3 Packs go digital. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com.
welcome back. Mid-Continent 3 packs go digital. Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics announced the imminent release of new digital standby primary aircraft instrument packs featuring the company's Flex Attitude Indicator, Flex Counter Drum Encoding Altimeter, and Flex Airspeed Indicator. All three instruments are supported by an approved model list STC covering more than 180 aircraft models. The newly offered instrument clusters are all digital iterations of Mid-Continent's popular 2-inch standby package. Hey everyone! I'm Van Winter, Director of Aftermarket Sales and Support for Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics and True Blue Power. I'm here with the team today in Wichita to announce the three-pack is back. I wonder, how many of you remember the Mid-Continent Standby Pack? This standby pack features some of the most popular STC'd and type certified instruments of its day. There are still thousands of these flying around, but it's time for a change. That was then, and this is now. Introducing the Flex Digital Three-Pack. Let's take a look at why these units are a great alternative or upgrade to other standbys. First up is the Flex Attitude Indicator. Among other things, its advanced solid state design delivers independent attitude. That means no need for GPS, magnetometer, or airspeed. Next in the three pack is the Flex Counter Drum Encoding Altimeter. It has a ton of user selectable features, including altitude target and approach minimum with alert, among many others. Finally, we've got our third member of the three-pack, the Flex Airspeed Indicator. This features configurable range markings for easy setup. That means no more painting dials to match the POH. And the best part? You can easily install the three-pack in just one day. You don't have to cut the panel, and you can utilize the existing secondary or emergency bus. And there's one more thing. We wanted to make it even easier for you to get these onto aircraft. So the Flex 3-Pack is AML STC approved on over 180 aircraft models. And get special pricing when you purchase all three units of the Flex 3-Pack together. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.